So, hello again and welcome to another episode of Quick Question with Soren and Daniel, the podcast where two best friends and comedy writers ask each other questions and give each other answers. I am one half of that podcast, senior writer for last week tonight with John Oliver, author of How to Fight Presidents, and itchy boy Daniel O'Brien, joined as always by my co-host, Mr. Soren Bowie. Soren, say hello. Hey everybody, I'm Soren Bowie. I'm a writer for American Dad, and as you can see, I could, at this point in my life, grow a beard. I'm just choosing not to. Oh, buddy. Yeah. I don't think they can see that. Um, it's, this is a, this is like eight day old stubble that I've got going on here. And it's just like proof that like the real estate's all full. I mean, at this point there's not, if I continued to grow this out, it would look like the beard of a, say a man. Yeah. Thanks to Shopify for supporting quick question. Shopify is a platform designed for anyone to sell anywhere, giving entrepreneurs the resources once reserved for big business. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash QQ, all lowercase. This episode is sponsored by MyBookie, an online sports book with live betting. Get started today by going to mybookie.website slash QQ with promo code QQ to sign up for free and double your first deposit up to $2,000 plus a $10 casino chip. I think what I have learned about my own facial hair situation is that there isn't a consistency to it. And there never was was a consistency of like, it was never like a full beard. So I understand that. But um, in trying very diligently to pay attention to uh, how long it takes to get a certain look going because i'm thinking ahead to the wedding and and shay and i are constantly checking in like when it's at a certain level that we both like where it's like when was the last time you shaved let's figure that out what kind of shave did you do um and there's no like actual consistent pattern to it like some days sometimes four days i'm like this is starting to look like weird and greasy i need to get rid of this and some days that doesn't happen until 10 days into a growth. So uh, just in all of the ways that a a man's facial hair could go wrong, mine has gone wrong. It's patchy. (laughs) It's very mustache forward in the beginning. Uh, It like gets curly and wiry and puby and it's unpredictable. These all of all, none of the things that you want, if you're ever trying to plan (laughs) your life around something, Uh, don't count on my face. That it, it it grows at different paces, mm-hmm. depending on like seasonality. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Well, good luck. I I assume you want some sort of beard for the wedding. Is that right? Um, not beard, just not uh like clean shaven completely. I know that okay. that's that that's a a sharp look. It just hasn't been like in vogue in a very long time. I don't think. I want some kind of yeah. action there. Uh, okay. Yeah. I also do, I do, uh, I'm a, mine is also mustache forward. And then it also, by the time, like I got to the point where I can actually grow like for a long time up around this area, up around my, my jawline, um, those seeds could gain no purchase. There was yeah. nothing happening up there. And it's just coming to fruition that like in my life, I could grow something that would look like an in-sync type of beard sure. or like the just the very edges produce hair now. Um, and if I did that, though, it would be almost exclusively gray. And there was a while at my job where all the other I looked around in the writer's room and all the other boys had beards. And I mm-hmm. thought, mm, I'm, I'm supposed to have a beard. Yeah. And so I just started growing one. And the facial hair was taking, but it was all very gray. And my wife was like, I would like you to shave it. And I was like, why? It's like just starting to turn into a beard. She's like, it makes you look old. And I was like, oh, I'm shaving it right now. <laughs> I can see myself falling into a winter beard pattern. Yeah. 
and then get rid of it when it's when it's warmer weather. That's and also nice. I I I might do a month long mustache. I haven't really decided yet, but that the genesis of that was last year. I did a thing that uh, a lot of guys I know have done when they've had like a lot of growth. Shay was asleep, so I shaved everything except the mustache, thinking I'm going to surprise her in the morning with a mustache, like, haha, look at me, I'm different. And as soon as she sees it, she was like, no, I like it. I was like, ah, well, I guess that means I'm a mustache guy for a while. <laughs> and I look back at pictures from that period of time and I'm just like, eh, I guess, like, if you're, if you're doing it on purpose, it's not terrible. And it's just, you know, just an interesting way for me to keep track of the seasons I'm not in school. I don't have a normal yeah. job. I'm never in a job at a place. I'm almost never anywhere. So like a mustache or a beard will be a good way for me to to know, oh, Christmas is coming Track up. Time. Like otherwise, how will I know? <laughs> uh, the thing about a mustache is, and I guess this is true of having a beard as well, because you have the mustache as part of it. A mustache for about a month or two is pretty painful. Yeah. Um, right in the corners of your mouth, it's really like you, in the growing process, it doesn't feel good. And I get a lot of complaints from my, um, when I, when I use these old soup coolers to kiss with the missus, mm -hmm. um, she doesn't like it either. It doesn't feel very good against somebody else's mouth. Yeah. And, and so I don't know, you have to like really commit for a while to some genuine pain before that mustache yeah. actually comes into fruition. And it might not look great. It, there's a very good chance it won't look good. Um, and even yeah. great mustaches. Like I, I worked with a guy for a while who had a mustache uh, and he was like a 20 something guy. And it wasn't like it was everything you wanted a mustache to be. It wasn't like wiry or 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 patchy or like didn't overhang in front of the mouth too much or anything like that. Didn't get caught up in things. But I was still like, yeah, you can. But why? Why do it, right. though? Why just do it all the time? It seems so strange. It does seem like also maybe it's just because you're used to seeing a mustache on people. But people who have mustaches, it does seem to genuinely change the form of their face. Their yeah. upper lip gets smaller somehow. Like it gets flatter. <laughs> I mm -hmm. don't really know what's going on there. Um, you, somebody who has like a great mustache beard combo, I think, is Anthony Jesselnik. Have you seen his? Oh yes, I don't think I connect his face with a mustache. It's I've seen got, like well, beard. he's got a beard, but he's yeah. got a beard, but he's got like the mustache portion of the beard. He keeps a little longer, almost like um, uh, an eighteenth century apothe apothecary. I don't, I don't know know what else to or a bartender. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess sure. like it's the mustache is just a little bit longer, and I'm like, oh, that's a good look for a blonde guy. Maybe I could do that. Yeah, got to do something. I I know. I was so, um, I can't remember if I told this before, but I was so, uh, everything ab ab about my, my young life was in a, a, a rush to get older and to look older because I was a late bloomer and, and I just, I was like very focused on, I want to get to college and I want to make money and I want to be in my twenties and I want to like, like, like be older, all that, all that stuff. And part of that involved, like, I want. Uh, facial hair to age up my face yeah. and to feel like an older person. So once I got into college, I just went without shaving for a while, like a long while when I wasn't, when there was almost nothing happening. It was my sophomore year of college and I was, and like everything was patchy and weird and worse. And I just looked like someone who was going through a tough time. That was the only look that I'd accomplished. And there was another guy on my floor, this guy, Jeff, who had pointed out, um, uh, my soul patch, he called it uh, dot, but that was like the only thing that was pronounced of everything yeah. that I had been working on for I don't know, two months. Yeah. And he was like, oh, I, nice nice dot, man. And I was like, thanks. <laughs> and then I got rid of everything except that. I was like, great, now I know I, I know what I can focus on. I know what I can have that is going to be yeah. my facial hair. And if I, my signature. if I only work on this one thing, then People are going to assume I can do everything else, but I am choosing this for fashion reasons. And yeah. he called me out on it almost immediately. Like he, he noticed it the next day and he was like, did you shave everything else? Because I, I commented on your dot. It was like this explicit. And I was like, hey, Jeff. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> I did. <laughs> do you That's like a real it? basis. Aesthetic. <laughs> I, I see why you chose it. I mean, you were still deciding whether you're going to be a bassist or not. Like yeah, that's a real yeah. aesthetic for a bassist. I had for a while, just like the chin 
because that's yeah. all I could grow. And other and uh, let that grow out. And I've got some pictures from a wedding that I went to where I have that. And I'm looking back on that. I, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. But I'm like, mm, you. It wasn't. It wasn't good. You shouldn't have done that. It was yeah. not a good look for you. <laughs> no, I shouldn't have ever done a soul patch. I think part of it, like like I was so. It's my Jurassic Park moment of so focused on if I could, never questioning whether or not I should, that yeah. I I never like investigated with myself. But do you do you want to be a guy with a soul patch? And and if you do, right. then you have to change other things about you too to match. You can't also yeah. wear sweaters and a collared shirt with stripes and your and your Weezer glasses. You have to make the rest of it make sense. Right. This needs to be the the centerpiece around which you build the room otherwise you you look like complete chaos you have to start buying blouses sure your and shirts I have to look a little flowery and yeah you have no choice yeah yeah um well daniel uh speaking of clothing i oh yeah <laughs> i i went to a fair this weekend Tight. um there's a fair in culver city it's basically you. You could qualify as just like it looks just like a state fair. You've been to every fair there's ever been. You know what the aesthetic is. Yeah. But the nice thing about a fair for me is that that's like my real window into um, teen culture mm -hmm. because they come at their very best to the fair. The fair is a very big deal if you're a teenager. If you're especially like middle school where you don't have you can't drive yourself it's hard to get places and it's hard to get places where there if you're a boy where there are also girls and likewise for girls that there are also boys assuming that that's your um your your sexuality but like it's just hard for them to find each other other than in school and when you have an occasion in which you're going to see one another and there are less rules than there are at school like you go out it's so exciting. It's like, you're yeah. going to wear your best clothes. You're going to try, you might try something brand new. You might try a little dot on mm -hmm. your chin. You don't know what you're going to do. And so I get to see kids when they, first of all, acting, there's a lot of pageantry to like the way that they hang out with each other because they might be seen. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so like, they're like doing a lot of piggyback rides and stuff like that. And then I also get to see what they choose to wear. And I'm going to tell you, Dan, they're fucking aping my style from back when I was that age. Our, you know, when we were kids and all of us wore the big ass pants. Yeah, yeah. And we wore and the girls all wore little tube tops and the guys all wore like bowling shirts or big T-shirts. Yeah. They, they're not even like doing their own spin on it. It is just our childhood and the hair, wow. the haircuts. It's like bowl cuts with a part down the middle, kind of like feathery. And, and the girls are doing the two, the ponytail with two long uh, strands in the front hanging down their face. It is, it's, it's, you go out and it's 1994 again. It's crazy. That's, that's fascinating. There, there's a lot I have to say. I'm going to start with the hairstyle thing because that, that's on trend right now. But that's very surprising to me because I, I look around and I feel like the trend and maybe I, I have my age is wrong. Maybe I'm thinking too old or too young, but I feel like curly mullets have come back in a big way where there's this sort of that Paul Mescal look where it's very tight on the sides and kind of long in the back and curly on top. I see that everywhere. I think it's an atrocious look that has never looked good on anyone in any time in history. Yeah. And once I see that people are doing it more and more, I'm just like, boy, this is going to be an ugly decade. All right. I guess we'll get over. We'll, we'll just have to wait for this storm to pass. And then we'll, we'll, you know, it doesn't affect me. I'm not going to change my hairstyle to <laughs> move with the times or anything. But, uh, you know, we all, we all share this world. We all have to look at it. And I'm like, ah, oh, that's dog shit. That sucks. Yeah, the other thoughts. I, that's, I know the haircut. You're talking about like that alpaca haircut where it just yeah. looks like there's like a cumulus cloud resting gently on somebody's head. Yeah. Um, I feel like that's actually on its way out. I feel like we're even past that now. That's good. I mean, we that's, are, that's very heartening. But we are back to the Jonathan Taylor Thomas, mm. Jonathan Brandis. Well, that was his name, mm. right? And then rest in peace. Uh, RIP to that guy. And, uh, uh, oh, 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 like, okay, so I watched a, a TikTok where this mom who was about our age w was talking to her daughter who is maybe 11 or 12 and 
showing her pictures of different boys from they were heartthrobs like these are like tiger beat regulars from our age and the daughter is ranking them and she's going through and she's going to like um freddie prince jr and he had like a very specific style that was like kind of like spiky black hair that kind of went yeah. out in all directions and she's not into it she's not digging that and like the boys who had like their own kind of like their own kind of thing going on she's not into but then she gets a picture of like nick carter and nick carter was so cookie cutter zeitgeisty 1998 or like whatever mm-hmm. time he came from where if you think about nick carter he had the bowl cut blonde he had like a puka necklace um probably a bowling shirt at all times and she is smitten with <laughs> with nick carter and she's like when like when is this because it's so confusing to her because it looks like this picture was taken yesterday as far as she's yeah. concerned and she doesn't understand why this style already existed and it's wonderful <laughs> <laughs> that is. Um, but like i think that we along the way we pick up you know it's like fashion recycles and like we pick up new things i remember a time when boot cut was very popular in jeans mm-hmm. and it was like very reminiscent of bell bottoms almost because it got really flared at the bottom we yeah. did a couple of things we dabbled with mustaches for a while as men um and we always like we pick up things that like older generations did a little bit a butterfly collar that kind of stuff but never in my mind has it been such a direct ape as this current this current fashion. I feel like my my parents when I was in high school would disagree with you on that count because when I the the hair transition from uh my middle school time to my high school time uh this basically everything uh around when when the world changed pre and post 9-11 is is the era that i'm talking about where we a lot of us were doing the part in the middle bowl cut kind of thing or the the caesar cup or cut where it's pushed up in the front a bit and then for reasons that i uh don't quite remember all of us guys decided together to start looking like shit we all grew our (laughs) hair out in insane ways post 9-11 it still wasn't related to that but wasn't it and that's when i i grew out my like giant curly afro that i had for uh almost all of high school was just like this this big floppy afro and my brother david who was in high school at the same time as i was he like for forever was was like a a pretty clean cut captain america kind of suburban guy but he also grew his hair out he didn't have like a big afro like i did but he had there's like pictures of us uh in our in our rock and roll days when we were in our band lunch made criminals check us out on Bandcamp, but not spotify because i don't know how but he, there were pictures of us and he had just like long sort of like rob thomas matchbox 20 shaggy hair and like there was a while where we all kind of looked like that in in my high school in new jersey with like whatever your hair did when it grew we did that and some of us had the curly fro like i did some of us had like just shaggy and some of us did that like really curly but still parted it down the middle (laughs) in a a a disgusting way and i feel like i remember like gary oldman's dracula kind of like that yeah yeah exactly (laughs) that part down the middle but the hair still sits way up (laughs) And and to us, it certainly felt like, um, if not explicitly rebellious, then it certainly it it felt like you were taking some kind of control after you know years of my life that had consisted of me going into a barbershop and being like, I will take a boy's haircut, please. Right. And just like doing a very standard, whatever was fed back to me to then being like, no, I'm not going to cut my hair. I'm going to grow it out. And like, this is, this is what I'm doing. I have decided I have a style now. And my style is, is carelessness and yeah. control over the one tiny aspect of my life that I have control over. And my parents at the time were just like, this is, you look like we did when we were in high school. Like my mom was not impressed with this this whole vibe. She has oh. pictures of her brother with a giant afro and pictures of her and her friends with like bell bottom pants and that kind of like hippie flowery style and just seeing a bunch of kids with afros and long shaggy hair. Yeah. She's just like, "Yeah, this is we did this already. What are it's you guys the days doing?" It's a confused high school look. Yes, 100%. <laughs> Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about because I did the same thing. Where, but mine was more forced, 
forced upon me. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, so this is a thing that, that maybe listeners don't know about, not even the connoisseurs, was that I was, even in high school, uh, I was trying to be an actor. And what do you I mean going, they don't know about this? <laughs> I, in high school, I like came out to <laughs> LA for pilot season when I was uh, a kid. And it, okay. uh, I think it almost led to my parents' divorce. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> it was not a, it was a, yeah, it was a tough time and it was a tough thing to be responsible for when you were young. But yeah, um, I had an acting teacher in Colorado who at that time was also very connected in Los Angeles. And she was like, I've got this group of kids that I want to bring out because I think you could all be very successful. And mm -hmm. I was in it. I was like, I was so excited and I needed to do it. And I was insisting upon it. And she was like, Soren, one of the things I need you to do is grow your hair out. And I was like, I don't think that's a good idea. And she was like, no, like that's what they want. They want somebody who has long hair so that whatever they want to do with it, they can. Because if it's short, they can't choose what to do with it. Yeah. And so I spent... Wigs um, hadn't been invented yet and wouldn't be for <laughs> years and years. A good portion of my sophomore year, just letting my hair grow to the point where it got like down past ear length. And I would wear a hat most of the time. So it would all kind of be back. And it would, yeah. but it was like, it hung pretty low. And... Let me tell you, that is not a good look for me. It is, I've got yeah. a really th a fine hair. It's like mouse fur almost. Sure. And so that kind of hair just lays flat and it naturally does that kind of part in the middle, but it's very, very feathery and straight, straight as an I arrow. mean, it's very helpful whenever you come back from the woods and I'm checking you for ticks. It's so easy. I don't, it doesn't take me yeah. any time. I don't have to worry about them being buried anywhere. It's just really the, the problem for you is just like, did they find their way into your ears? Then I have to really yeah. check that. But otherwise you could see like at a glance, I don't even need a comb. I can tell. No, you don't even use your fingers. You just do a gentle, yeah. a gentle little blow and it, all the hair just sort of moves out of the way. Right. <laughs> um, so it was a really bad hairstyle for me. And it was one that I was f uh, forced to keep for a while. Fortunately at a time that like trend wise, everyone was like, yeah, he's doing that on purpose. He's doing that. Like, that's like what we're all doing. Yeah. But I, I absolutely hated it. I hated having that long hair. And then at some point there, my rebellious moment was, I mean, you could picture in a movie putting on Huey Lewis in the news, hip to be square and cutting all my hair off. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm going to be part of the system now. Yeah. Ah, oh, it feels so good. I had my inspiration. I mean, there was, there were, there were plenty of reasons for me to cut my hair. And it was a, a multi-step process of, of one summer being at the beach and coming out of the water and yeah. my long hair flowing down my back and uh, my brother, one of my older brothers, seeing me from behind and seeing this long, wet hair on some body in the distance. And, you know, I've also got my, my big sweet ass. And then I turn around and it's me and my brother was like, you need to cut your hair. I'm sure that like <laughs> he saw this silhouette and thought something, and then it's me. It's like, oh no, this I, this this mistake can't happen again. I you, you need to cut your hair, but I still I didn't do it after that. I just got frustrated one day. I was working at a summer camp, and you're outside all day, and it's so hot, and yeah. your hair is just so sweaty and heavy, and your head is just wet for so long that without it wasn't a plan. I just on the way home from work drove myself to get my hair almost all chopped off and then i went to a store and i bought a bunch of hats because that was my my two twin problems were it's so hot with all this hair and also there's so much hair i can't wear hats and i miss hats i want to wear hats again and so i solved both of my problems cutting my hair and then buying a bunch of hats and just like strolled home like <laughs> hello it's me it's 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 a new season of the same show that we've been watching and yeah. i'm different now <laughs> it is it's i mean i imagine this is probably true of girls as well and women but for guys it takes a very long time for you to land on what actually is a hair cut that complements your fucking face <laughs> yeah because there's a lot that don't and uh you think there's only so many styles for men but like there's like variations of the style that can really do a lot of damage to you and it was a thing that i had discovered early on which was i thought bowl cut bowl cut was my thing when i was in like middle school high school and the problem was if I let this, if I clipped the sides too short, if I wore a hat with blonde hair, I looked like I might be in, uh, I might have leukemia. Like I looked, there I, I, had, okay. <laughs> I had, I was completely, it looked like I was bald basically. Yeah. And people would like be like, take your hat. Did you shave your head? And I'm like, no, it's just a, the bowl cut. Like we're all doing <laughs> 
Um, but it, if I had to like very intentionally after, you know, a year of doing that, be like, okay, I can't let them cut. I had no, I need to know the number of the clippers that yeah. they need to do on the side so that I don't look like a cancer patient every single time I get a haircut. Right. I, uh, love how much we've talked about hair in I this episode. It. Oh, this is our hair episode. I know. Folks, I want you to do me a favor and just close your eyes and think of your favorite business. Ah, uh ah, -uh, no, you cannot choose risky business. You, you cannot choose business time in the bedroom. I mean, like a brick and mortar business. It can also be online. I, this is getting very convoluted. I'm going to pick mine. Got it. It's Momofuku. I love Momofuku. It's the only restaurant in the world that has ever made me go, oh my God, that's the best meal I've ever had in my life. Well, guess what? Momofuku uses Shopify. It can often be an overlooked secret that the business behind the business is what's making selling for shoppers and buyers simple. For millions of businesses, that business is Shopify. Nobody does selling better than Shopify, period. Shopify is the business that gets businesses off the ground. So if you're into growing your business, your commerce platform better be ready to sell whatever your customers are scrolling or strolling through on the web in your store, in their feed, and everywhere in between. Nobody does selling better than Shopify. And the not-so-secret, the shop pay that boosts conversions up to 50%, meaning way less carts going abandoned and way more sales going... <coughs> businesses that sell more sell on Shopify. So the next time you're eating Momofuku, whether it's at home or whether it's at the actual restaurant, God bless you for going to the restaurant... You think, hey, this all got to start from Shopify. So upgrade your business and get the same checkout Momofuku uses. Sign up for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash QQ, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash QQ to upgrade your selling today. Shopify.com slash QQ. What are you doing with your hair for the wedding, Dan? I don't know. That's another thing that, that we need to really figure out we've i've got um the i've got two more haircuts in me i think before the wedding and i've got like a cleanup uh right before the emmys and i think that's from there we're gonna we're, we'll make some real decisions about what what we think looks best and like we're gonna go through old pictures and uh like fully just bring it to my uh, barber that I've been working with for four and a half years. Yeah. And she'd be like, Th you see this picture of me uh, when I was 32? Do whatever you can to make that happen again, please. <laughs> Bring it back. <laughs> please. Uh, that's exciting. And so how is, how is, sorry, I hope there's nothing else you want to talk about because I have some questions about your wedding. How's the wedding planning going? It's going well. We're, we're, we're getting pretty down to the wire where there's a lot of stuff we talked about this before where we couldn't pull the trigger on things until we got an official headcount and we still don't have 100 percent of uh responses in for headcount but we're 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 moving along a little bit there there's there's a lot of um small final things to do that that are are not fun but we're still trying to find ways to make them fun and just just sort of like tick things off boxes at this point. There's so much more signage than I'd anticipated. And also the, there's, I, we, I think both are very, uh, susceptible to the all knowing Instagram algorithm that at this point, Instagram knows everything that's going on in my life. And like, before I even started searching for wedding stuff, it's algorithm was feeding me cute wedding ideas and yeah. that's i i feel like uh, if i was if i didn't have instagram and if i was just like like planning a wedding in a vacuum i would have like oh you obviously you're gonna need this you're gonna need uh that you're gonna need the this and that and now instagram there's like such a uh community of instagram wedding influencers where you're scrolling through your feed and then someone's like, we found the cutest custom wedding sign for our bathrooms. And I'm like, fuck, now I need one of those. Like they like all these things that you don't actually yeah. need, but right. Instagram uh, shows you, yeah. you like the cutest one that was made on, on Etsy. And it's just like, well now, now not only do I need that, I need 
a custom one. I need the best one. And and uh, it's it's just you know really exposed you to just how much of a of I don't want to say racket, but I don't know a nice word for it. Yeah, what a racket. Just what a, what a, <laughs> what, a, a racket. what a racket it all is. I mean, I feel that way anytime I walk into a store anyway. Like a, any clothing yeah. store or a store or like a home goods store where I'm like, "Oh fuck, we could be doing all this?" Uh Yeah. I could. I could also just do some of it and then I would still I would know in my heart that I didn't do all of it, and that doesn't yeah. feel great either. Uh I guess none of it. I guess I'm mad now <laughs> and I'm going to be mad the rest of the day. Now, uh it, obviously listeners won't know this, but we we schedule our these podcasts to coincide with our our schedules and our dance mm-hmm. is getting very busy right now because mm-hmm. the wedding is coming up and i don't even remember the stuff that has to come up like all the different things you have to do right before the wedding because you lose it all immediately afterward but like this weekend like what is your what do you what is your weekend blocked off for what are you doing uh i don't know this is uh my uh bachelor party weekend and Whoa. i know no details about it other than wait a second it is happening this weekend what i what? i know no d- no details about it i don't know anything so it Ouch. sounds like it's a surprise Ouch. to you also well yeah. i can't take any blame for that because i i had nothing to wow. do with anything wow and it's i can all i can tell you is you couldn't even you don't even get to be like hey just so you know involve my very best friend no Soren i Bowie. could not i i i had nothing to do with anything in fact initially I didn't want one uh, because I uh, it's it's a, it's a lot of attention and it's a lot of asking people to like like give up you know it's not it's not the old days where you could just like rent a VFW or a firehouse and it's one night and you get drunk and you go home it's all like very event based now and the people in my uh, in in my life are like fathers and family men and people with with jobs and responsibilities so it's you can't I didn't want to insist people take a lot of time off or like, or like do, do a whole, to do something incredibly fun. Right. With Especially you. because the, the, the for a whole kind weekend. of asking people to, to give up a wedding base, a weekend basically for the wedding. And so I was like, no, nah, I don't think I want to, I don't want to have like a bunch of people or any amount of people, uh, give up a whole lot of time for a bachelor party. As time goes on, I, I and Shay talked myself into it. I was like, you know what? I because she was having a bachelorette party. I was like, I, did, I guess I do kind of want this, and it'll be it'll be fun. So I I uh, and I told uh, my brothers like, hey, I, I think I do. Um, I would like something, and uh, I I've been I've been taking some notes about like what what I want. So if I would love for you guys to plan something, and uh, I un, unbeknownst to me, David had had already. The, the 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 train had left the station. Even though I said I don't want one, he was like, "Fuck that shit," and he started planning one. And I didn't know. I still don't know anything about it. The only reason that I know when it is is because I was uh, I'd been having panic dreams about it because for his bachelor party, uh, we completely surprised him ten or eleven years ago, whatever it was. Where like there was a false. I remember. Your your birthday your bachelor party is going to be in Atlantic City on this weekend, and then like three weekends before that, we kidnapped him basically when he got home from work. He got home and and fucking nine of his turbocharged buddies <laughs> were waiting in his house to shoot him with Nerf guns, uh, and a bag had already been packed for him by his fiance, now wife, and we just like threw him in a car and 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 went somewhere. So I was. Uh, so nervous about getting kidnapped and and like really panicking about it for a while, even though it's a it's a good thing. I was still like truly losing sleep over it months ago. That because I was looking around every corner because my the way my job works, my I can't take time off. My hiatuses yeah. are just like built into a calendar, and so I knew any hiatus or any three day weekend I had could be the weekend and the lead up to every hiatus, I started to look around for signs that was like, is this, is there anything that I can glean from someone, someone's Instagram or someone's text? Or like, if I, if I felt like my fiance was acting strangely, then I would think this, this is it. 
this is going to happen. And I was looking for a surprise kidnapping around every corner yeah. and it was destroying me. It like, it's not <laughs> a level of stress that is fun. And so I, I, uh, I talked to David and I was like, I, I, I truly don't want to ruin anything that you have planned, but like, you have to tell me if you can tell me when it is, please. So I can sleep. <laughs> and yeah. he and she was like ah and he told me he told me what it was and even then i was still like is that part of it is that a trick too i was still until i'm actually wherever i'm supposed to be yeah. i'm still on like very high alert it's it's truly because I, i'm i'm excited about it and and the the reason it's such a surprise is that i i i want to give my brother and whomever else is involved uh which at, at this point I know is just my brothers is the only things that I know for sure. And I want them to, I, I want to give them the, the chance to do this exactly the way they want to do it because that's a fun gift to, to give to them. And I, I don't want to ruin anything they have in store at the same time. I am still like, I don't want to spoil the surprise, but I, I am looking for clues everywhere for everything. About, does Shay know anything? Did he talk? Did you talk to Shay? She Shea about does. It? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So he filled her in at least. Yeah, and Good. I, I have still been like, so I know it's I know something happens tomorrow. That's what I've been told. But even last week, I was talking to Shay, and I was like, so I'm recording the podcast on Thursday. So. <laughs> Just in case this thing isn't happening on Friday and it's actually happening on Thursday, yeah. if anyone needs to know that information, you have to. Well, this is you very have exciting. To, you have to tell them. It's very exciting it's that exciting. they're also that your brothers have chosen to keep me in the dark as well. This is really exciting because maybe I will be kidnapped, or maybe you'll <laughs> all show up at my house, and it will be a big surprise for both of us. Yeah, however many of us there are, just showing up at your house. I mean, but, I you'd think that they would at the very least think to invite the DJ of your wedding. The guy who's going to be spinning. Nope. 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 Uh, the for the wedding. That, and I can't believe that they didn't. I, I, I mean, I'm, not, I'm, I'm obviously not asking for payment. I'm not going <laughs> to want payment at the wedding for that work because this is my gift to you. Uh huh. We have a, we, we do have a band for the that's wedding. That's going to be interfere. That's going to interfere a little bit mm. with my plan. Um, um, do you want to just have them do like some sets in between? So what I do is I, it takes me a while to get all my jewel cases in order in between okay. songs. So it's going to be like, Oh, a, it's actual CDs in yeah. cases. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, get, wow. I bring a Discman and then I connect mm -hmm. it to, uh, uh, the stereo. I've tried it a few yeah. different times. What happens generally is if the, mu if the music's too loud, it actually makes the Discman skip a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's, is that, cool, I wonder, like, is that, is that real? Uh, when you say Discman, Discman, like it's a coworker that, you know, is that <laughs> it's somebody's last name, Alex yeah. Dis Discman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, my Discman, uh, is it, it's obviously it works pretty flawlessly. I can put mm -hmm. on that like rumble control that you get, you use for cars and yeah. that helps out quite a bit, but I'm thinking that my jewel cases, they're not. I like to keep them in chronological order, not in like alphabetical. So it takes me sure. a while sometimes to get to stuff if I, my memory is not so good. And chronological of, of when they came out or when you got them? No, when I encountered no? them. Okay, yeah, got it. When I encountered the songs. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's going to take a while probably. And it may, maybe in between songs, they could do like a little late night, um, uh, uh, like the, uh, some five to 20 seconds of music. And okay. then we get right back into Two Princes by Spin Doctors. Sure. Okay. I mean, I don't want to spoil too much, but that song will be played pretty on he pretty heavy rotation. Oh, all right. That's good to know. Yeah. Um, gosh, there's no real way out of this bit, huh? <laughs> I think that was it. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> so, yes, excited about Bachelor Party stuff. Very nervous about Bachelor Party stuff. Me too. Um, still thinking at any at any corner there there could still be more surprises even though i've been assured that there's not um yeah. i think that's just the, the the particular manifestation of my anxiety as i have been clutching the table and sweating for this entire conversation well i hope that it's fun dan yeah me too hope I'm you sure have a great time 
at the very last <laughs> bachelor party I ever could have gone to. <laughs> Uh, I'll tell you all about it on the podcast, unless it turns out it's a thing I can't talk about on the podcast. <laughs> oh, what are the chances of that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's no secret that I love football. I can't help myself. There are elements of it. I don't like that people get hurt so often, but I just can't help watching it. And even when it's a game that I just don't have a dog in that fight, there's no Broncos there. There's no teams that I care about. It doesn't matter because... <laughs> Then I just bet on the game. And then I love every single game. It adds a whole new element to every game that I watch when I can just bet real money on it. Well, winning season is back, folks. Football is back, and my bookie is here to make sure that you're ready to cash in on the action. This season, my bookie is pulling out all the stops with incredible promotions like weekly risk free boosts on Thursdays where you can bet without a sweat. If your bet hits, you win big. If it doesn't, forget it. My bookie will refund your wager. My bookie is also giving away hundreds of thousands in prizes with their Super Survivor and Square contests. You can enter now for your shot at big cash rewards. And with My Bookie Plus, the more you play, the more you win. With their loyalty rewards program, you can unlock your more exclusive promotions, giveaways, and bigger rewards. Bet on anything, anywhere, anytime, and make your season a winning season. So whether you're a seasoned pro or a first-time better, there's something for everyone to win big this season. Just visit mybookie.website slash QQ and use promo code QQ to sign up for free and double your first deposit up to $2,000 plus a $10 casino chip. That's mybookie.website slash QQ and use promo code QQ to sign up for free and double your first deposit up to $2,000 plus a $10 casino chip. Um, I'll say that I've been to bachelor parties of all kinds, including my own. Mm-hmm. My own, mine was fairly tame. There was not, there were no like strippers or anything like that at mine. I did go to the ER. <laughs> that was exciting. Yeah. Yeah. But it was fairly um, tame except for the, the part where you almost broke your neck. Yeah. Good siren. Great, great timing on those sirens. Yeah. Um, I, I've been to one bachelor party where. It was that like traditional type of bachelor party where there are strippers or like you go see strippers, and it fucking sucks. <laughs> I have never it's, been it's not to a fun experience. <laughs> any bachelor party like that? Oh really? That's so great. far. I mean, who knows? well, we'll see. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what kind of lecherous brothers you have where they're going to take you, but it's possible all four days are just in a strip club that has it happens to have a buffet, and they figured out like they've crunched the numbers and been like, we can technically eat there for every single meal. Yeah. We'll just stay. We'll just stay the whole time. As long as there's like a corner of the strip club where I can I can read because I'm definitely bringing my books. Yeah, I doubt that. But sure, go ahead. <laughs> Maybe bring a reading light. Yeah. Well, you can. I know I've, I've heard tell that you can get, if you pay extra, you can get a private room in a strip club. I will get one of those. <laughs> and then like, excuse me, ma'am, please wait outside. I mean, she could sit there and you could read to her. No. I don't think she would mind that. In fact, that might be a nice change of pace for her. I think you yeah. could just pick any girl, oh, Soren, any woman, and be like, hey, I'd like to go to the champagne room or whatever. And then you get there and you just pull out Pride and Prejudice or whatever yeah. you happen to be reading and be like, sit down because uh, mm-hmm. I got a little bit to read to you right now. <laughs> I hope you like the middle of books. Yeah, I hope you, I hope you know the story <laughs> because I'm jumping in in Medius Rest here. Um, okay. Well, that's very exciting. Daniel. How much, I'm happy. uh, cause I was at your bachelor party. Yeah. Thank you for the invite. Yeah. How you're welcome. Much, um, say or control did you have over what happened? Cause it was, it was all things that, you know, it was people that you, you like and love. And there was, we were all in a house together, a house with a, with a very dangerous pool and a hot tub. Yeah. And there was grilling on site. And then a lot of standard Vegas, you know, the things you want in Vegas. We got a really nice hip pool party. One of, one of your friends, our friends is very, uh, connected and accomplished the impossible to accomplish feat of getting, uh, 12 men into a club uh, yeah. like a rooftop club with I mean, 12 no men that objectively no didn't belong there yeah <laughs> paying no cover and had like no women 
as as like, and this is what we're bringing to the table. It was just like like a a giant van pulled up and. and Twelve men, half of them comedy writers, <laughs> spilled out. <laughs> we're like, we're here for the Playboy Club. <laughs> and we somehow got in, yeah. Yeah. and uh, and all of that plus like gambling whenever you wanted to gamble. But I, uh, what it, what was it all planned by Eric, your brother, or or yeah, were you like this is planned. here's here's my list. It, I yeah, I like came up with who I wanted to go, and. Then my brother did most of the planning from afar, and so did Dan Campana, because he lived in Los Angeles at the time. Shout out mm -hmm. to Dan Campana. Um, so my brother and Dan, because my brother was not here, so they were like planning it together, but uh, Dan was doing a lot of it. And and then like other people did, like Jason got the van and stuff, but at no point, all, every single point, they're like, what are the things you want there? And and I was like, I would like this type of thing. But then, you know, other things came up. Like our friend Justin was like, we could go to the, we go to this club at night. I have a connection there. And we were like, okay, let's do that. And yeah. that pool party. And the so to describe, uh, for anyone who hasn't been to Vegas, they have like every single hotel also has a pool. And then the pool is just like an all day scene. And it's like yeah. that the, everybody's partying. Like there's house music playing, like thumping through Like the water is vibrating to house music. Essentially you can, in the middle of the pool, there are generally bars. So like you wade over to the bar and get something. There's also outside gambling and these cabanas and stuff. So we go to one of those and it's clear that everyone who's there has spent probably the last whole season preparing their bodies for this moment. Yeah. Like people, <laughs> everybody there looks just like a model and they're not tan. everybody. And then, yeah. And then 12, <laughs> 12 little boys show up and we are so pasty and, and hairy mm -hmm. and, uh, and <laughs> one of us there. is covered in bandages on his face. <laughs> and yeah, one of us is not has, allowed to get his face wet. <laughs> one of us has a very swollen stitched up face <laughs> and we all take off our shirts and, and, and it goes in the pool in a yeah. circle. <laughs> and it was, it's like oil and water. You just watch everyone else sort of make way. Yeah. The seas part. And not because they're like, wow, look at these showstoppers. But because they're like, I don't want to touch that. I don't yeah. think I'm interested in anything that's going on over there. Yeah, it's like, congratulations to what I assume are these 12 contest winners. But they're going to ruin <laughs> our pool party. <laughs> you, you mentioned Harry. And I, I, I don't know if this is... I hope he's not embarrassed by this, but uh, listeners, if you've never seen our friend, friend of the show, Cody Johnston with his shirt off, <laughs> it's really something. It's Whatever amount of hair you're imagining, it's quite a bit more than that. It's majestic. And it's when he gets scared or angry, it, it, stands it up. changes. <laughs> <laughs> and so obviously he's in a pool in Vegas. It's not his normal setting. So he feels threatened. So it's up. His hackles are up yeah. and he senses his danger and competition. Yeah. And it, it has a sort of hedgehog quality to it where it goes right up on end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he can curl up into a ball in the middle of it. Um, yeah. It, it's, 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 I would describe it as majestic. He's got like, yeah beautiful body hair <laughs> yeah uh it was a very fun batch i have nothing but good memories of the of it because uh i was talking about movies in the jacuzzi when you when you smashed your fucking face into the floor and yeah. were rushed to the er uh but i a, a big takeaway was just how impressed i was by you to to not let it ruin your mood or the weekend because it because it happened early it wasn't the an end of the night. trip kind of thing it was the first night yeah. yeah it you and and for me that was just like like physically would be painful and also would probably dampen my mood for the mm -hmm. next 48 hours and like ruin everyone else's time too but you were just like nope i'm gonna take my advil we're gonna go we're gonna do all the things that we plan to do and you and you were in in high spirits and i was like this is this is this is so much better than uh <laughs> whatever baby i'm gonna be if i stub my toe they yeah i do remember because that we, we were at the er until dawn and then i came back and i went to sleep and slept till i don't know like 11 or something like that got a few hours and came out and michael was like michael swain was like okay so are we leaving today <laughs> and i could see like a few anxious faces behind me like also checking in and i was like no <laughs> yeah no we're doing all the stuff 
And everyone's so relieved that that was still the plan. And it never even occurred to me that I needed to tell everyone that we were staying. Yeah. I was just like, oh, that sucks for me. Let's go it do was, all the things. <laughs> it was two identical moments for the guys in the bachelor party of being ready to do whatever you wanted to do and being relieved when you when you didn't want to do the thing. Because yes. we were all, to a man, prepared to go home if that's what you wanted because you were the bachelor. And we were so happy when you didn't want to go. We were also quietly amongst ourselves prepared to go to a strip club if that's what you wanted to do and we were so happy when you didn't because you know i you you never struck me as a strip club person and this is not a knock against strippers dancers performers of any kind um it's it's not my thing and it didn't strike me as your thing either uh from years of knowing you but I had never known you at a bachelor party and there's so much tradition with bachelor parties that right. like leading up to it, I was like, I don't know, Soren, Soren's kind of bro -y. He's good at sports. He might just think I'm in Vegas. It's my bachelor party. You know, you it's sometimes you see someone smoking a cigar and they've never smoked a cigar before, but like the context of a wedding or a yeah. bachelor party is like, or camping is like, suddenly I'm in this context. And so I smoke a cigar. It didn't seem out of the realm of possibility that you would suddenly be like, well, we're in Vegas and it's my bachelor party. So we're going to a strip club. And we were all, every one of your friends was like, I don't want to, but if he says it, you'll, you'll do it. Right. Like we'll all, we'll all, we'll all do it and smile and pretend that we want to do this. And we're like, yeah, yeah, we're all, we're all going to do this. And then even you at one point was, you were like, do you guys want to go to a strip club? And we were all like, if you want to, boss, you're the captain. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you're yeah, like, yeah. I don't really want to go. And we were like, oh, thank God. <laughs> yeah. From my perspective, it was the same thing where I was like, and then the second night, I guess we should go to a, I guess we should go to a strip club. I think people would probably be, if we're in Vegas, like we're doing all of the stuff that of a traditional yeah. bachelor party. I was like, I think that's part of it. I think we have to go. And so like that night's little... <laughs> A nice looming and then we we go out to a bar i would go to a club and stuff like that and we're we're all drinking and having a very nice time and it's getting to that time where if we we're gonna go we gotta go and uh i was checking in with everybody i was like do you guys want to go to a strip club and everyone was like if you if you do <laughs> and i was like okay uh, all right, let me check with everybody <laughs> and like ran around the circle and we got the same answer from everybody and so I started to also feel it from my perspective where I was like, I, I mean, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to go, but I also don't want this to be a bad bachelor party. I want my friends yeah. to have the, like all the bachelor party experience. And then finally I was like, I tested the waters with a, I'm not, I'm not so sure I want to go, but you guys can go. Everyone was like this sigh of relief as everyone was like, yeah, no, we don't want to go. <laughs> I was like, okay, great. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> yeah. It's, it was, as we're as we're all very happy to be at the rooftop of this Las Vegas famous hotel bar, we're all also quietly thinking, you guys remember how fun it was playing beer pong in the house, <laughs> swimming in the house, <laughs> grilling at the house. Other, <laughs> do you think maybe? <laughs> um, we we had two. Oh, that night was there were these two women who were purportedly dentists at a convention there who found our group. You are telling this story. <laughs> yeah. Um, there are these two women, uh, Brazilian women who <laughs> just hearing it now, it sounds so silly <laughs> Two, and they were dentists and they were there yeah. for some convention or something. We're at a bar and we're at a bar early. And so there aren't a lot of people there. And when I say early, I mean like 10 o'clock. <laughs> and so like, there's not a lot of people yeah. there. And these two women just like join our group and they're yeah. just like, we want to hang out with you guys. And we were we like, are dentists okay. and you are so I just we just love the teeth and you are so much teeth in your group. <laughs> That's exactly how they sounded. <laughs> and so they I don't know why. I mean I described what we looked like based on when we were at the pool earlier. Like we are even with our clothes on, we are we're twelve dudes. Like we're yeah. twelve guys. And we are not you, <laughs> you can get the sense of what our bodies are like <laughs> even through yeah. our clothes. We are not yoked dudes and we these girls were just like we want to spend time with you and so we hung out with them for a very long time and then towards the end of the night they even went to a different bar or a different club with us like they came with us yeah. to a different club and then at the after we did the strip club thing where like everyone was like are you want to go strip club do you want to go strip club no oh thank god 
right on that time, I was like, all right, I think I want to go back to the house. And our friend was like, are you kidding? Why? These two girls. And and we were like, no. <laughs> like, yeah. What do you mean? Like, what are you worried that we're leaving them in the lurch? Like that we've taken them to a different uh, casino and now they're, they don't know their way home. And he's like, you don't want to hang out with them more? And we were like, no, we're done. What, yeah. <laughs> what what did you think was going to happen here? And so right. we left. Best our case friends. scenario that these are true Brazilian dentists who are into our weird bodies and bandaged faces and strange energy and yeah. and shoulder hair. Best case scenario, they're real people who want to go home with us. It's still like, if you didn't see any red flags before with this group of 12 guys, here's one more. You can come home with us. You'll have to squeeze into our giant white van. <laughs> our five row van. Yeah. <laughs> it was, uh, it was a very strange. And then looking back on it, we were all, and it wasn't even like till months later, I think it wasn't even the next morning. It was like later when we were like, Hey, do you think that those girls were prostitutes? <laughs> and everyone was like, Oh, that makes oh. a lot of sense. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, we that was my bachelor party. It, oh, and if anyone's curious why I went to the ER and you don't understand, you don't know the story already, I uh, j- jumped into a pool and hit my face on the far end of the pool, split open my nose right at, at the very top in between my eyes and also my whole forehead. And immediately it was like biting down on a light bulb. Like I heard crunching, got out of the pool and was like, oh, that was bad. I should go clean this up and went to the bathroom and it was just a perfect storm of, of what would cause your face to bleed. It was, first of all, facial injuries bleed a lot. I was drunk and the water was warm. And so I, I got into the bathroom and it became evident immediately that paper towels were not going to do this job. They were not yeah. going to suffice. Like they were disintegrating in my hands in all of the blood. And there's like, now that it's like a I Love Lucy episode where there's like, now there's blood on the wall and blood on the mirror. And like, I'm slipping in my own yeah. blood. <laughs> like I can't. We all Can't forget how problem. we forget how violent Lucy was towards the end of her run there. <laughs> well, I mean, imagine her at a baking shop or whatever the <laughs> fuck she's doing. Um, and uh, I got it was so much blood, amazing amount of blood. And then I got it finally like kind of under control. And I went back outside and I realized I left a trail of blood into the house. And I was like, Jesus. And my friend, my friend Will Mead cleaned up all of the blood while I was at the ER. Classic. But I went outside and showed everyone my face. And I was like, is this? And immediately my friends were like, you have to go to the hospital <laughs> with before I could even finish a sentence. They at the hospital sp- opened it up to show Ed and Jason who brought me. They showed them like, here's his bone. Um, yeah. And then the doctor started telling me about a good plastic surgeon in Los Angeles. And I started getting very scared. He's like, almost guaranteed you're going to need plastic surgery for this. Um, but I, I don't know. I heal like Wolverine. It's fine. Yeah. It was, uh, you were in the pool playing maybe fish out of water or some other game. Which oh, is why, like, it's a game. <laughs> you had to, you weren't just like, listen, I know it's, I know how it sounds. Drunk guy in a pool on his bachelor party splits his face open it sounds very cliche but it wasn't like he was just diving to do an impressive trick or something no. it was a game where you need to avoid other people or else they'll tag you and then you're it and so you would pushed off a wall to get under someone very quickly and you'd misjudge the depth for some reason and smash your face in the pool so you were in the pool doing that i was in the attached jacuzzi with michael and cody doing gun to my head a real life version of an after hours mini episode where the three of us are just like talking about the matrix or target earth video game from the nineties or something bizarre and stupid really into the conversation. And then at some point hours into the night, someone, maybe your brother, maybe Eric was like, Soren's at the hospital. And we're like, no, he's not. He's in the pool. And we point to the pool and there's no one in the pool. <laughs> just yeah. like, yeah. We just very clearly completely missed this whole adventure where the star of the weekend gets injured and whisked away by responsible parties while we're sitting in this jacuzzi just being like, no, the thing, if you're doing ah real monsters, if I'm crumb, I'm getting a hat that has little seats for the eyes so my arms can just do whatever they want. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I, we didn't make a big deal about it. The game is called Stealth. That we're playing, <laughs> and Stealth, uh, obviously we were all very good at it because we all 
left immediately and none of you noticed. Mm-hmm. Um, stealth is like Marco Polo if you ever want to play it. Great game. You, uh, you, it's just like Marco Polo, but nobody says a fucking thing. You're just listening mm-hmm. to the sounds of the water lapping against either the sides of the pool and deciding if that's different than the sounds of water against a body. And so that's how you're deciding where everything is. And I had gotten out of the pool. You can still still do a fish out of water situation. And somebody was coming right over and I jumped over them and down and smash my face. Yikes. Okay. Well, that's going to be our podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you right. for listening. Um, I hope you enjoyed yourselves. We are Soren and Dan. This is a quick question. You already know that. You can find Daniel and I on Blue Sky, or you can find this podcast on X. You can also watch videos of this podcast uh, on TikTok, on Instagram, or the whole thing on YouTube. If you liked our theme song, that's by Me Rex. You can find their music at merex.bandcamp.com, or you can find Lunch Money Criminals on, on bandcamp.com as well. Uh, I didn't know that because uh, I made a point of never listening if- to them. I don't know if that's true. It's possible that you can only find us on purevolume.com. <laughs> I'm sure you can find me Rex there too, if you want to double up. <laughs> um, and uh, always uh, want to give a shout out and a thank you to our sound engineer, our editor, our producer, the glue to this, this whole podcast, Gabe Harder. You will find him nowhere, except occasionally his voice chiming in on this podcast. That's going to be it for us. If you want to listen to our uh, Patreon exclusive episodes, you've got to donate and then you're you're in. You're in the club and you can go listen to us <laughs> talk for another half an hour if that's something that you're interested in. Okay, bye. Bye. I've got a quick, quick question for you. I think you'll have a great time here